Then. Okay. There you go. Hello, hello, people. Oh, what was that? Hello, hello. Hi, hi. Welcome to the stream, everybody. Um, let me set everything up. I was just going to draw myself, so this is perfect. Well, let's draw together. Uh, oh, whoop, whoops, whoops. Sorry. I need to turn off my notifications. Okay. Yes. Hello, NanoCat. Uh, I've worked... Uh, I have work in three hours. I haven't slept yet. How are you doing? I'm doing good. You should get sleep um, instead of being in stream. Uh, it's your choice in the end, but my advice, probably that, that sleep's really gonna really gonna be worth it <laughs> when you go to work. You'll, you'll be thankful you had those three extra hours of sleep. Um, can't stay, but we'll watch it after. Fair, fair. Um... What? Uh, don't forget something along dwarf pets slash foods. Uh, thank you for your imagination, uh, imaginative world building and art. Oh, I appreciate that. Yes, um, I mean, hmm. It would be interesting to have them have some sort of pets. Um, what is your favorite character you've drawn? Uh, um, either... The rat catcher, the dwarves, or Jakob. But the dwarves don't really count as a character, as they're more like a species. So if you want to, like, specifically there's one of them, then it's the rat catcher or Jakob. Probably Jakob. Because I've drawn him a bunch of times. He's still not perfect, though, even though I like him. He's not perfect. What time is it in the States? Well, I don't know. Ask people who are in the States. No idea what time it is there. Probably uh, fucking midnight? I don't know. Um, so what's the dwarf equivalent of a staller stand look like? Well, that's why we're here. I haven't done it. <laughs> I'm working on it. Let's work on it together. Um, the This stream, uh, if you're wondering why I'm streaming, uh, the next video is going to be about the dwarves, right? And I, I, I need to draw their structures because I don't know what their structures look like. I've played around with it a little bit, um, but I've not settled onto anything that I'm happy with. So I thought maybe if I drew in stream... Um, you guys might be able to suggest things that would push the ideas in interesting directions that I did not consider before. So, uh, what we are drawing is the Dwarven Bazaar. Uh, the dwarves are all located in one place, right? Um, they're in Verus, so if you want to trade with the dwarves, you have to trade through Verus. Around the Dwarven Bazaar is a large perimeter wall, and within it is a city called Trade Run. Um... The city is basically just a, a, a stop for people that, that are aiming to trade um, mostly with the dwarves. So it's inns, accommodations, stuff like that for if you're going to the Dwarven Bazaar and then get back out again. Give me Turkish vibes? Yeah, I, I'm sort of mixing and matching a lot of things. Like, they got those smoking pipes, but I also want, like, some Nordic patterns and... and um, stuff like that. So it's it's a weird mix. I don't, I don't know. Have you seen the Star Wars prequels? No, I don't. I don't. I haven't watched any of the Star Wars movies. If uh, I think you should add a little. St what? 
influence with some large carved starting stone? Starting stone? What's a starting stone? Or you mean standing stone? You just accidentally missed the N and pressed spacebar instead. Yeah, I think that's the case. Standing stones. Hmm. Looks like a termite mound. Yeah, that's why I'm, I, I have some pictures of, of termite mounds as well. But uh, basically, this is, this is what I got currently for ideas. So it is located on the side of a mountain. So it's carved out of stone, right? There are some parts that are metallic that are added on, but most of the structure would be stone uh, with metal accents and stuff like that. So it has like this, this it's carved out of a mountainside pretty much. Um, and, and this is, this is what I got, you know, and it's all right. You can associate it with the dwarves because I was in chat and somebody suggested, oh, just make it sort of resemble the dwarf. And I was like, you know what? That's a good idea. So actually like a roof, like the head of a dwarf does help sort of tie it together a certain amount. Um, so I, I'm not sure if I want to keep that or not. I, I. I don't think I should set it in stone yet, maybe play around with it more, but it's definitely like an interesting way to tie them together. Um, but what I'm focusing at the moment is, uh, or what I'm trying to focus, is the general silhouette of the the entrance of this bazaar. Um, also, sorry if I pronounce bazaar wrong. I, I'm not sure 100% how to pronounce it properly. If it's like bizarre or bizarre, I'll just call it bizarre or bizarre. Sound the same. Um, okay, here, let me show you this as well. Uh, I got some images of like some rougher images that I had before, uh, like these and these. Uh, but they they just I I was dumb by like trying weird angles. Uh, first, which just complicates things. So now I'm just drawing flatly from the front to try and get an interesting shape first and then playing with angles. Uh, are you sure you want the structure to be symmetrical? No, I'm not sure about that either. Um, that could still change as well. So I, I'm still very open to changing basically everything about it. Um, nothing set in stone. I like it being short and wide. Yeah, I, I, I do think it's better that way. It looks a lot more grand that way. Or, or if, if I make it tall, it doesn't really feel dwarf-like to be tall, like tall buildings. If they, they rarely build outside anyway. This is like one of the only large structures that are on the outside so they wouldn't be like, ah, yes, let's build them to the fucking sky. We, they hate the sun. Like, they don't like it. It's bright. Ah. So, like, why would they want, like, big, tall? Do you want it to be grand? Okay. Uh, so here's what we're going to do first to give you guys a sort of idea of what I'm trying to go for. So, um, yes, uh, I'm going to write some descriptive words of what I'm trying to accomplish with the design. So it definitely has to be grand. I want it to be imposing as well. Um, like, that's, this, those little squares are supposed to be the size of, like, carts and wagons. So this thing's huge, right? This thing's supposed to be gigantic. Um, so definitely imposing. Uh, also, uh, ornate. Um... But brutish, if that makes sense. Like it's it's beautiful, but it's definitely very industrial. Like it it might look elegant at first, if if you look at the general overview of it, is like oh wow, there's so many nice patterns. But then you look in between the cracks and in between the the beautifully carved stones and stuff there's pipes hissing and thumping of pistons and shit like that going on you know uh no i wouldn't say looming looming 
doesn't feel right to me. I, I'd say imposing, but looming is too much. Looming makes me feel like it's trying to oppress its surroundings, but that's not what the, the case. It's trying to be grand and and impressive, you know? But it's not like you see it and you go, ah! you're supposed to be like, oh, let me go in and buy stuff, <laughs> you know? Not, not the scary kind. Uh, Howl's Moving Castle? No, I, I, I know what Howl's Moving Castle looks like. I, I want, like, a more orderly, uh, style to it a little bit. But yeah, I, I... Okay, what other words might be good to use? I, I think that's fine. Um, hmm, let's see. So grand, grand and imposing can definitely be, uh, shown with scale, of course. Uh, but also we could use some tactics, like having the structure uh get thinner at the top or. Uh, like instead of having the structure be like this we have it be like slightly slanted like this because from a from a bottom if you're looking up at it it looks a lot more big um we could also use some of that uh roman design strategy uh where it's like uh lots of small That's exactly what they call it back in the day. Lots of small pillars instead of one big one. Um, very nicely abbreviated to Los Mio. Yeah, that's how they remember. That's how the architects remember it so easily. Um, basically, like in instead of having like really big shapes in the design, have like really small. Uh, not really small, but like compared to the size of the structure, smaller columns, which makes it look bigger in total. So that would be good. Uh, ornate, we'll have to look for the type of patterns we want to use, but we're not going to think about the ornate part yet. Um, because, well, we're thinking about the overall shape for now. Brutish, I, I guess, would mean like some sharp shapes uh industrial types smoke also metal actually metal like grating we could use grating grates Bones and stuff. No, it's made out of stone. Uh, material. Hold on. Let me let me write down the material so we know what this structure. Cause I'm I know what I want to build it out of. Uh, so materials will be basically just metal and stone. Pretty much. Would they use glass? Mm, no, I, I, I doubt they use much glass in their structures, so just metal and stone. Uh, it would help emphasize that brutish nature as well, where there's no, like, natural materials or, or, or nice materials. There's only metal and stone and brick or something. Rock and stone? Yes, rock and stone. Chest and crates, those would be on the inside. I doubt anybody would be just, like, placing crates on the outside. Um, it'd be neat to have, like, some scaffolding around to sort of show that even though it, it's not a, it's not a 
stagnant building, right? There's there's scaffolding around and people fiddling with it, so it's like constantly changing and getting stuff added onto it. So What if it's sandstone? I Hold on, I guess I should emphasize that it's like mountain, rock, side, stone, like not sandstone. We're not in a part where there would be sandstone. Less smooth than organic? Well, that's the thing. It's like if, if I make it, because I have always pictured the dwarf structures being like curvy uh, in some parts, and then right angled and and hard in other parts right like the the roof and stuff like here is is curved and smooth and then there's other parts that are spiky or, or just straight uh lots of brown you know what Okay, let's think about this. What, uh, so, so the, the location was previously a mine. So what kind of stone, what stone is, an ore mine, metal coil, oil shale, gemstones, limestone, uh, limestone, rock salt, gravel, clay. Gray and black? Or am I wrong on that? What? Stone color is the result of specific mineral content, right? Yeah, I, I think so. So, like, um, I'm thinking about what kind of stone... Mostly thinking about it in a way of what would contrast nicely with metal accents. Uh, because the metal we're going to be using is probably going to be rusty and, and worn like this. Um, because it's, like, exposed to the elements quite a lot. So it needs to contrast with, like, that sort of color. Um, which I guess would work well with, like, a darker stone. Well, let's search up limestone. What does limestone look like? It's white. Limestone's really bright. Yeah, I don't think limestone's gonna look nice. Hmm. The stone could be stained as well. Yeah, that's true. I could stain it. So I don't think we have to worry about the stone too much for now. It'd be nice to have like a sort of quarry-esque uh shape to the to the stone around the structure though like those layers uh hold on let me get a good reference like this so so around the structure where it's built there's like these lines going on in the mountainside maybe like multiple entrances around it as well so it's clear that there's been like more happening around it so like if this is the main structure like that why am i not using a black pen that's the main structure and the mountain is like carved out around it like that and then we can have like those quarry lines this and then perhaps like small little entrances like abandoned mine shafts and stuff like that that could like really show off the scale as well Right? That could be used really well to show off scale. And I guess also like scaffolding and stuff. Yeah. 
an inverted quarry? Well, yeah, it, it doesn't go down, I guess. It goes into the side of the mountain. Like, I was thinking, so, so the mountain goes out like this, right? That's, that's a mountain. Uh, my artistic rendition of mountain. Uh, like that. <laughs> uh, and then it's just like a, like a bite taken out of it, pretty much. Just cut here. So you have like more height to play with, and then the structure is here, right? And then there's the uh, perimeter wall like that, and then the city. Wind erosion? What? Wind erosion? The fuck's that? Things eroding with wind? What would that have to do with this? Are you telling me that, that that's going to be an issue? Like, realistically? It's going to be like, oh no, if you carve it into a mountain... That way, it's not, it's gonna fuck with the wind erosion, and that's gonna slowly eat away at your structure or something like that. Giant worms, giant worms milk. We'll talk about giant worms another time. Um, we, we, I, I do want giant worms in the world. That, that has to be a given. We can't have underground creatures without having giant underground worms, so I'll be sure to, uh, to do that as well. Just wait. That's what happens in desert regions. We're not in a desert. Let me write that down so everybody's on the same page. Not in desert. What, a jagged mountain core slash spire visible and unmined with the outside entrances and levels carved ornately on one side. I, I, I wish I could picture that in my head, but after I, I, I have trouble thinking of how that would look. Sorry. He's clenching his teeth. <laughs> Uh, where is this? I have no fucking idea, man. <laughs> I just know it's not a, not a, not a, a desert. Like, the, the issue is with, like, biomes and stuff like that. It's so tough to, like, know what kind of biome feels right for a location. It goes through all the seasons, so it has to be, like, those, um, trees that have the leaves fall, right? But, like, I don't draw I don't want to draw many trees I'm sort of picturing it being more plains like you know the dry side of a mountain where there ain't no trees I was thinking more of that and so not many trees very flat lands or not flat it's next to a mountain just hilly landscape Prairie? Use words I understand. What, you think I know? I've not read a. I've not never finished a single book in my life. Why would I know what a prairie is? What kind of vocabulary is that? Not judging you, by the way. Just I've never heard of a prairie. Prairies, an enormous stretch of flat green land, with moderate temperatures, moderate rainfall, and a few trees. Oh, okay. Like a savanna? A... No, I know what is. Yeah, savannas. It's just flat. These are just different flavors of flat. Prairie, savanna. Look up plat. I'm not even gonna try to say that. Plateau, plateau, P L. Oh, it's moving past the screen. 
Nope, nope, I missed it. That cow. There you go. Is that how you spell? Wait, is that how you spell plateau? Don't tell me that's how they spell plateau. Plateau? Oh my god, that is that word. English. God damn it. Every time, English. You keep fucking with it. English is stupid. Look, there's a lot of words where it's like, I have heard them, and I can say them, but I've never seen them written down. So when I when you see them written down, you're just like, just like the fuck is that? And <laughs> plateau. That's how you type it. My goodness. Okay, yeah, that looks really good, actually. That's the sort of feeling I, I want. Perfect. Hold on. Let me let me get some of these images to get, get the vibe, you know? A, a lot more war-torn, of course, but still the, the elevation sort of uh, feels nice. Just slap these images randomly. Like, that, that feels nice. I could feel myself carving away at that mountain, just putting a, putting a fucking dwarven fortress there. What is up, monster gardeners? Nothing much, man. Planting ideas like we always do. Planting them ideas. Okay, this is nice, too. I like this. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, check out ch Chaparral Biome. Ch 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 Roll. Uh, yeah, I, I'd say it works too. I'm I'm struggling to find an image that little little too dry for me. It's getting it's getting a little too brown. Uh, are you on Discord? Um, just uh, if if you want to send inspiration on Discord, just send it. Well, in the uh, in the monster garden chat, preferably, um, and at me, so I can know to go there. Just at me and send an inspiration if you want. Uh, is it near the coast though? It's near mountains. Well, maybe there's some mountains near the coast somewhere, but no, no, it, it's like nowhere near the coast. It's very much inland. Oops. Okay, let's see. Um, hmm, what other requirements do you we need for this place. I think that's a pretty good start, but again, I'm sort of lost at starting. Because I, I, by the way, before I get into like drawing this, I'm not good with drawing structures, okay? I, I'm very much have, have been avoiding drawing structures because I'm bad at them, but obviously that's not good. I gotta get into doing it. So that's why we're doing this. Um, so this is not going to turn out well, and probably into the future I'll redesign this place over and over again when I get better at structures eventually. Um, but yeah, let's see. Let me just like do it all around just a little bit.
my arch nemesis, the architecture geometry. Yeah, architecture is not my forte. Um, so this is meant to be a bazaar, right? Is it open to all species in the setting, or is it dwarf exclusive? It's... I really don't want to explain this. Um, it's, it's a bazaar where people go to buy stuff from the dwarves. If, if that helps. Okay, also let's try removing the, um... Because, like, maybe a part of the structure is symmetrical, like the main entrance part is symmetrical, but anything besides that starts straying off from symmetry. So, like, here. My grandpa is an architect, I'll get him on the line, yeah. Tell him to hit me up. <laughs> hey grandpa, could you call up this random YouTuber that you don't know? Just because he's having trouble drawing a fantasy fortress for some dwarves. Oh boy. Well, I have to like put that thing back up. Uh, I'll I'll put it back up for now. Listen, like I I like I appreciate the enthusiasm about like asking questions about the world and stuff like that, but I'm going to cover it in videos. Like there's no point in me telling you here or like telling you specifics here and then later having it to repeat myself when another person comes in and then later having to repeat myself when another person comes in, and then eventually I'll say it in the video anyway, right? So I won't, like, answer any questions about, like, dwarves that I deem to be unnecessary for now. Um, so if I don't answer your question, that's why. Uh, or I didn't see it. But the most likely answer, if it's a question about dwarves, is because I don't want to answer it, because it's going to be in the video. You know, some people go to the lengths that I'm quite impressed at, but also a little bothered by. Some people DM me on Discord to ask me questions about things in the world. And at that point, I'm like, what's the point? <laughs> like, do you want exclusive access to a very niche thing about the world and only you will know that thing? And when somebody else comes to me, I'll have to answer them as well. You know? You need 3D architecture drawing, shadow, depths, and tree. Wait, you need 3D for architectural drawings? Make shadows, depth, and trees? We're, full, we're on the sketching phase. My goodness, I don't want to go 3D. We crave forbidden knowledge. Yeah, but like, don't go to the lengths of like messaging me to be like, hey, so are the dwarves like all together or... It's like, oh, just fucking wait, my goodness, like, or the best ones, the best ones uh, are where people just message me and are, are like, hey, what's at the top of the pillars? And it's like, fucking, god damn it, man. The whole point is that the we're not there yet. It's wonderful. Does the world use squatty potties? It's definitely still in the squatty. See those kinds of questions. I I would love to answer. They're definitely still in the in the squatty potty era. I'd say the 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 wooden plank with the shithole in the middle. That's that's the level we're at still. This looks like ass. <laughs> we need to look for some structure references. 
Well, it's not even like structure references would help because like I'm just trying to explore the shape of the thing and it's not like references are going to help me explore the sh well maybe they would I don't know I don't know maybe a more dome well all of them have been domes I don't know what to do anymore One large dome structure, maybe, and then, like, two splitting off to each side. Yeah, but that looks too tall. Problem is, um, this sort of same shape I want to use for the bunker cities, which means, like, it's, it's going to be hard to differentiate. Well, hopefully it's not going to be hard to differentiate them if I do a good job, but I'm going to be, I'm, I'm worried that it's going to overlap shape language of those two structures, or the, the shape design of those two structures are going to be too similar to each other. Um... Cone? No, no. I've tried cone like this, and it just doesn't feel right. Let me try cone. <laughs> I'm 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 denying requests too early. I, I should definitely be more open at this point, because it's still very early into the process. It just looks like the other one. Why would the cone be there, though? You're having the same problem as Mr. Howard Phillips Lovecraft? You mean being, like, incredibly racist? <laughs> or or he, couldn't, he couldn't understand non-Euclidean geometry, which is geometry on a curve. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have heard about that. <laughs> It, it, he uses it as it if it's like this creepy weird thing, but it's just it's just geometry if it's like on a like a curved surface. <laughs> like that's pretty much it. He also did it with like uh with uh, I think it was with some other stuff as well that I don't remember where he explained it really creepily, but it's actually something that just he doesn't understand. <laughs> With air conditioners. Yeah, that's that's the one that it was. Air conditioners. He, he also doesn't understand how fucking air conditioners work. Uh, the elves aren't canon in the universe. I, I still have don't feel like they, they fit well. And I don't have a reason to, like, have them in the uh, world. Yeah, maybe this is the smokestack where it's just like all the pipes coal like come together at the top. Looks like a fucking volcano. I don't know if I like that. It looks very evil villain layer Dr. Doom-esque. I'm going to blow up the world with my Giga Volcanonator cannon style building. It's a forge. You know what? 
that's a good idea. Let me pull up some forges for inspiration. Or, well, hmm, forges would be, like, too simple. I think, like, like coal furnaces or, like, um, actually train engines. Train furnaces might be interesting. Nope, never mind. Or nuclear. Yeah, it sort of does look like a nuclear cooling tower as well. Forges in Horizon? Uh, I haven't seen the Forges in Horizon yet. Not steampunk. I, I don't want to go, like, too steampunk. I want... <laughs> I'm going to invent a new one. I don't know if this exists or anything. I, Because cause when you say steampunk, the wrong images go into my head, you know? Because, like, to me, steampunk has been turned into this, like, weird random copper cogs and pipes stapled onto clothing-esque thing, you know? But to me, it I, I want more, like, industrial punk, where it's, like, it looks factory-like, not, like fantasy factory more like industrial uh child labor factory you know <laughs> we i i love that fucking child factory vibe you know it's an aesthetic trust me diesel punk yeah diesel punk i guess Yeah, Frostpunk. Frostpunk's a cool one. That's a good example. It feels like a lot more purposeful, you know? Child labor punk. Diesel punk. Let me search up diesel punk. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely more going towards diesel punk than steampunk though not too much like this this is still a little little much like victorian era or what we're we're still figuring it out um not Victorian either. I I want like a fair middle ground between everything. So it's like, because it's really hard to obviously have like technologies like golems and stuff like that, which are basically robots in a setting that is also m medieval esque as well with witches and stuff like that. So you sort of have to like really stretch it far with with the references and like try to sort of mash everything together otherwise there's too much of a disconnect you know so i i it's it's a really hard balancing act and i'm not doing myself any favors um by being bad at architecture <laughs> but yeah maybe like a large thing like this is interesting Maybe we can go more like this. Like, what if there's like more of an outer structure to it? Like, more scaffolding. Let's go dome first. And it's actually just a giant dwarf hiding in the building, and he rises up. And he's angry. Oh, no. No, no. Yeah, maybe smaller domes around the circumference of this dome. Oh, 
Oh, thank you very much for the uh, donation of two euros, uh, Gabriel Petrov. Gabriel Petrov. I hope I said that correctly, but appreciate it. Thank you. Um, can dwarves be cursed? We don't know. Um, there have not been witches around that area. So who knows? Maybe they can, maybe they can't. Pilatuses. I do like the overhangs on this thing, though, so maybe we can, like, try and get that implemented, too. Because I like that there were, like, overhangs. I don't know why it would have that, but... Feels right. Somewhat. Smoke. Hmm. The cone might actually be growing on me. Let me let me add a cone to this one. Maybe the cone's the way to go. They do need a way to siphon magic. That's a good point. Right, right. Because they do use magic, by the way. It's just they use it in their constructs instead of actually like casting spells themselves. So having the structure actually attract magic uh, would be good, which means like having the top of it be a giant input would be very useful. Um, but that would mean if it rains then like a lot of water would collect up there so that means we would have to have like some runoffs which would also be cool because like when it rains then the water like runs down the buildings in channels or something and off the side somehow or maybe getting collected and then used in the uh, actual structure big ass building side yeah, yeah, basically. Just a giant-ass input. So yeah, actually a cone shape works quite well for that.
So you wouldn't want the smoke coming out of that. I mean, yeah, it'd be cool to have, like, statues on it as well. Because um, they could, like, do statues of themselves, pretty much. It'd be awesome to have, like, two giant dwarf urns on the entrance. It's, it looks even more like an evil layer now, though. Like two giant statues of their own hubris. Yes, we are grand and giant. And then you walk in and they're like waist height. Are you become streamer now? Where is the continuation of your story? When your next video drop? My goodness, calm down. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We're working on it literally right now. <laughs> it doesn't... It's it, it takes a while, so... Are there any needs for defenses? Not for them in particular. Um, they're surrounded by, by Verus uh, outer wall, so we don't have to worry about um, defenses. Tips on designing houses? You're asking the wrong person. <laughs> I am terrible with, with architecture design. Do not ask me about buildings, my god. Even about characters, don't ask me about them either. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'll be right back. Um... Okay, I'm back. I just left to turn on the light. Jesus, I'm not dead. Okay. Okay, there you go. I like big buildings with domes. Me too. Me too. I like big domes. Maybe we can get the best of both worlds. And do like a dome that then is like a perimeter. Or, or like a walkway, you know? And then it becomes big thing and then there might be like a small 
visible like walkway up to the top or something. Is symmetry the baseline here? No, no, it isn't. I just am using the symmetry tool because it's faster that way. And I do prefer that the entrance itself and, like, anything in line with the entrance is symmetrical. But, like, um, if... I, I would prefer if, like, the main structure here is symmetrical and then anything that goes off could not be symmetrical. That's not necessary, I don't think. But the main part needs to be symmetrical. Be nice. Sometimes it's almost like I can still hear him stream. I'm not dead. I'm not dead. Hey, Ong. Just staying here while I was, uh... What? Nyokai. <laughs> Uh, well, luckily enough, at the moment, because of, like, the Patreon and stuff, I, um, it's, it's fine enough for me to, like, sustain myself while doing this. So this, this is the only thing I'm doing. His voice will be in our heads and our hearts. I'm not dead. <laughs> but yeah, I, I am very grateful for you guys' like, support and stuff like that, because it is, like, enough to actually have me you know, uh, sustain myself at the moment, which is wonderful. Uh, so, so yeah, I can like full time basically focus on this though. I, I must say my production is definitely a little bad right now. Like how, how productive I'm being and stuff like that. It's, it's not art block or anything. I just, uh, I'm very bad at managing my time. It is like fully my fault at this moment. So I apologize for, like, the lack of videos and stuff as well, because, like, I, I do have, like, a lot in stock, but it's just, it, it's really hard to finish things, you know? In general, it's just very hard to finish things. Uh, but also just because, like, I, I, I keep falling into that same trap of, like, not liking what I'm doing and, and throwing it away or, or... Uh, changing it or adding too much even sometimes that's the problem is I want to add too much instead of a video just being simple and short and I can finish it and then throw it out there instead it's like oh I need to do a video that covers all baselines of everything in the world so that we can be on the same page and stuff and the video would be like 20 minutes long or something and I've rewritten the script like three times but obviously it's like, why am I, why am I trying to make a 20 minute long video? Why don't I cut it down? Why don't I make four minute long videos and throw those out? You know, it, it's like, for some reason, my sco scope just sort of skyrockets uh, out of control. And I really try not to have it happen, but still it's, it's, um, it's hard. add more and want more one hour videos well yeah but if you want one hour videos you'll get one a year <laughs> because the problem is it's just like as soon as the video gets longer the 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 work time on it gets exponential because i don't have my, my work ethic is like i i will be very productive and then it goes downhill if it passes the point of my my patience so did you try short format? Yes, yes, I did. I mean, we have, like, two shorts. I do want to make more, but I want to get the uh, dwarf video out first. This one that I'm working on right now. Uh, I want to get this done. Try Adderall. But yeah, like, it, it's very strange. Uh, same with, like, uh, I, I have a whole conversation with Jakob and the stranger like the video that I said I was gonna do 
Um, obviously, I sent the failure one, I posted that one, but that was only my first attempt at trying that. I've tried three times after that, um, and I have the most recent one that still failed. I have the whole thing. Uh, where do you live? What the fuck? <laughs> my goodness. Christ, don't... <laughs> Why are you asking that for? But I, I have the most recent try at that, like all voiced and recorded and edited, but it just ain't good enough, you know? Or it just doesn't feel right, or the script just isn't good enough, or it, it it's, you know, the, the sound doesn't sound right. So, sounds like motivational burnout. No, I, I'm making things. They're just not getting finished because <laughs> I don't think they're good enough. Uh, so I hope I'm going to be, like, able to push through to, like, make the dwarf video either way. Um, even though I have, like, these these thoughts of, of it not being enough. Um, I'll try to, like, get it out. Of course. Um, I, I've set myself a deadline for, at most, the, um, the 15th of this month. Like, I'm trying to um, make it so I, I get back to, like, posting at least two videos a month. One on the 15th and the other one on the 30th. Um, and, and obviously I have to make videos that are possible to be made in that amount of time. Uh, is art your job? Yeah, this, this is basically my job now, but it doesn't feel like one. I, I very much enjoy it. What are your mother's maiden name? Start my own setting that I'm doing a D and D campaign in. Oh, okay, that's nice. Uh, thank you. Appreciate that you're you're taking inspiration. What's the name of your first pet? Oh my god. Where were you buried? Have you heard of the Edge Chronicles? No, no, I have not heard of the Edge Chronicles. Um, I was buried in the mountain deep, yes. Your work is very inspiring, and I would like to try something uh, like this, but being a junior uh, illustrator, it seems very difficult to find sustain, uh, sustainability for, for pursuing something this big. Yeah, uh, I, I, I genuinely, like... Lady Luck is fully on my side for some reason. She's just given me gifts left and right. Because, um... I mean, I just got really lucky. And a lot of people just found me all of a sudden. The, the... The deities of YouTube above just kissed me on the lips with their algorithm. And, and gave me a, a slap on the cheeks. And were like, fucking, you go. We'll show you to everybody. And and then they did, and so I got lucky. I, you know. Uh, but yeah, dude, uh, keep up the amazing work. I love watching all of this uh, grow outwards, and even your five words video inspired me and my friends to do our own little challenges. Oh yeah, uh, I, I definitely want to do like more collabs. That's for sure. Um, on the uh, comments of uh, the the five word video, uh, I got some suggestions for other artists that I might want to contact to get into it as well. Because I'd love to like get more people involved in that. Just like you know, fun thinking exercise. Because um, obviously, it's the same as those videos where it's like uh, the the videos that. Um... Oh my god! I forgot his name. The the guy who makes music uh, on YouTube. That's where I got exposed to the concept first, where it's like four artists, one sound, or, or one um, whatever, and then they make music. Uh, 
and then like other people did it too. Music Man. <laughs> but yeah, so so it, it's just very interesting for me to see different perspectives of how people interpret the same thing or what they do with the same idea. And and I think that that has like a lot of potentials because like mine was like just a yeah Andrew Huang that's that's who I was thinking about um yeah I like his stuff a lot uh or, or like the the four artists thing that he does definitely has exposed me to a lot of artists that I that I now like a lot um like the the one where um he was he did one with Daedalus it was an artist called Daedalus, and obviously just awesome name, first of all, calling yourself after fucking Daedalus from, from the, you know, from the myths. Um, but the the song he made was just, it was, it was so good. It sounded so nice. Uh, how did you generate the words? Oh, well, um, basically, I just, I just got them and myself, we just wrote each of us five words so each of us wrote five words and then we put all of those words into a random generator uh, to randomize those words so there were 15 options pretty much so it could be that it picked three of my words and two of somebody else's or so it was random but it's just that there's a chance that one of every person's word could be chosen um, and we just went with the five that we got uh, we've rolled it a few times because the first few times it came out as absolute gibberish. Like, none of us could be like, oh, yeah, I could think of something for that. No, it was just stupid. Um, because, well, we did five words, which is, it's 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 quite a tall task to pick five words um, to use as a prompt, you know? You'd preferably want to go with, like, two or three at most, but five is... So we got a little lucky that it was, like, it was rooted ancient, um, grow. So it was like words that sort of fit together more nicely. Uh, if we didn't get those, it, it might have been like a lot tougher. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely want to do that again. Uh, with like more artists. And and also doing it in, in other ways, like using other methods to get ideas instead of just Oh, randomized words every single time. Maybe it's like we do the uh, monster bash thing that that um, miscast does, and we like draw parts of monsters each of us, and then we pull randomly out, and then we have to take those pieces of monsters and try to mash it together. That could be interesting too. I have another idea as well that I've pitched to them, and I think that's what we're gonna do next. But I'm not gonna tell you because I think it's a really good idea, so I'm not telling you. Um, because that's my idea. Nobody steals it. <laughs> but no, no. But yeah, yeah. I, I, I think if you, if, if that video eventually comes out, if they're free again, I, I, I'm like down to do it as soon as they're available again. Uh, if they're available again and we do it again, I, I'll hopefully be able to convince them to do that idea that I got. And, um, it's going to turn out fucking amazingly. I know it is because it's a really good idea. Silhouette challenge. Everybody makes a silhouette and then gets a random design. A random one to design a creature. Huh? How do you get your references? From Google. I just search things on Google. Randomly. Or whatever I can think of. Are you still creating a language? Um, well, yeah. We are pretty much done with it. Like, it, it, it has served its purpose. Uh, the design, I mean. Oh, shit, also. Um, the, 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 the figure, right? Because we made the dwarf language. The figure. Uh, they printed it out. They, they actually printed it now. And, but, okay. They didn't print the version with the patterns on it yet. Because they wanted the the non pattern version first to like play around with it and try and figure out how to make the head pop off and stuff like that, but they did print out a version of the dwarf. And let me tell you, it's a chonkster. My God, it is. 
that <laughs> that that thing ain't small, man. You could <laughs> that's a, that's a dwarf for self defense right there. You know, you could put that in a sling, chuck it at somebody's head, and they'd fucking <laughs> they they'd be sleeping good. Big old boy, yeah. I love him. It's so good. It looks so good, honestly. Yeah, but and, and this is not even made out of polystone yet. You know, this is the um, you know, uh, resin printer version of it. So it's not made out of polystone yet. Polystone is even heavier. So he he's gonna be a hefty boy. <laughs> You're gonna, you know. I want it now. I want to eat it. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. No, no, no. Don't, don't do that. A sock full of dwarves and go to town on somebody? Yeah. Not encouraging that, obviously. I'm not encouraging you to put a sock uh, or, or put a dwarf in a sock and start bashing people with it. I'm just saying it's a possibility. <laughs> it's, it's possible. You could do it. could use him as a drinking glass. I don't know if polystone or the paint they'll use would be food grade. I wouldn't recommend it, just in case, you know? And I also don't want your dwarf getting moldy. What if you put food in it, and then you don't clean it well, and your dwarf starts smelling bad? What are you gonna do then? Dwarf starts getting stinky, and you're like, ah, damn, my dwarf's stinky. <laughs> like, what do you do? Yeah, you know? so I, I wouldn't recommend it. Probably also not dishwasher safe, you know? Yeah. I need a dwarf now, sell them. They're gonna be pre-ordered soon enough, okay? The the video I'm working on is gonna be to, like, introduce them as well. Because, like, I've, I've talked on stream multiple times about it, of, uh, of course. But, like, I haven't made a video talking about them as well. So the next video is gonna be, like, uh, about... The dwarves. That's why I'm making a video about the dwarves to also talk about the figure and stuff like that. What's on top of the world pillars? Fuck you. Oh boy. Uh, I use Krita. I use Krita as a drawing program. It's free and it's the first one I've ever used. I've never tried any other one. So I've just gotten used to it. Um, yep, that's pretty much it. Just got used to it. Do you have an art station? I have like an ancient art station that I don't use anymore. I don't, I didn't see the purpose of why I needed it. Because like, I, you know, I wasn't I wasn't gonna be on there. I, I didn't I um most of the things are definitely gonna just be on YouTube. Like I'll just use YouTube for everything. For announcements and posting stuff, posting updates, which I've also been lacking in, <laughs> like just updating people. I need to do that more. Um but just everything on YouTube. I've sort of abandoned Twitter as well. Like I haven't posted something on Twitter in ages. I should really keep using that for now but i feel like soon twitter is gonna not be usable um because you know elon's doing a number on that one for ai training yeah that's that's another thing i i don't really care um about that sort of issue that much uh, in the first place, like, I, I don't have a strong opinion about it either way. I don't want to get involved with it. But, uh, just, that's just another reason where I was like, eh, you know what, uh, never mind. Let me, let me just not. You hit the limit within five, wait, wait, they actually implemented the limit? They did that? Like, that's there now. You can't. Huh. Yeah. When they when they eventually move to like the pay only thing, I'm ditching it. It's I hate Instagram. Not because of anything. It's just it's so hard to find anything on there. Like it's it's always just the viral stuff at the top, so it's like impossible to find anything. 
and you're at the mercy of the algorithm. I mean, that's sort of everywhere, but on Instagram especially. But also just the, the thing that I hate the most about it, which is just why I can't get myself to do it, is the aspect ratio of the posts. Because most of my images aren't that shape. So I either lose a part of the image or have to, like, make it smaller. And they fuck the resolution so much. Like, you can't zoom in. If you zoom in, it's, like, all pixels. So it's just annoying to get images. Like like this, for example, you know? I make a page like this. I can't post this on Instagram comfortably because I will have to cut this into three fucking segments so you can have it on Instagram and people have to swipe through it. Uh, will the little dwarf guy be uh, purchasable already printed? Is he a little uh, storage dwarf? Is he real? Well, the, I'm, I'm making a figure. Like, it's actually going to be a product you can buy made out of polystone, like an actual proper figure. Right? Uh, it's going to be painted and stuff. So, so yeah, it, it's not going to be, like, just a file or something. You can actually buy the thing, and they'll ship it to you, and you'll have an actual dwarf you can put on your desk, and then put, like, a... I don't know, put something in it. I want to put my D&D &D dice in it. I, I doubt there'd, you know, be so much space in it, even though it was, like, quite large. You'd want the walls to be a certain thickness, so... um, Depends on what your imagination can can make you think of to put in the thing. I'd probably put a set of D&D &D dice in it. You could also put, like, a chicken wing in it for, like, safekeeping or something. Pot for plants? I... Did the dwarf... No, have you... Did you see how big it is? It was, like, this big. That's... I don't think that's enough for a potted plant. And also, like, the head's gonna come off. So if you want to use it as a potted plant, you'd have to take his head off which means it'd just be the bottom of a dwarf with no head. I guess you could, I mean, if you want to butcher it, I'm not against anybody mutilating my dwarves. If you want, it's at your own risk, but you could maybe like drill a hole in its head and then make a plant come out of it or something. If you want. Dwarf mug. People, yes, I know. I know people have very much suggested dwarf mug, but have you looked at the thing? It's not, it wouldn't be comfortable to drink out of. And also, like, what would the handle be? I mean, yeah, we could just use the same model. Have a handle up, up his, up his, uh... Put a handle behind him and, and have him be drinkable, but... Oh, you know what you could do? I, I guess we could make the beard... We can make the beard a handle and then have the nose be those press down things where you can press it down to open the, <laughs> the mug. And that could work, I guess. Look, the thing is, the thing is, um, when it comes to like merchandise and doing this sort of stuff, like making a figure, obviously, uh, merch craft, the people I'm working with came with me, came, came at me, uh, with the opportunity, uh, <laughs> me uh so i obviously took it uh and i don't know what the reception of my viewers or you guys will be uh with with like figures and stuff like that um future endeavors like m mugs if you'd like that uh obviously depend on how well this does because i don't know if if this is something people are interested in so we'd have to see how many we sell and stuff like that, and if it goes well, um, then I guess we might do something else after that. Reception better be huge. I don't know. I don't know. That's why I'm, I'm sort of testing the waters with, like, just a little dwarf figure. Well, little. It's the size of a can. Uh, with a dwarf figure, see how people like it, if they want to buy it or not. Because um, if not, then, well, I, I know, and I don't have to, like, try and go that route. Mug me, mug me here now. What? Mm. 
will they be painted as well? Yes, yes. Look, um, in the video, I'll, I'll, I'll cover how far we are in the process right now. Uh, and then anytime there's like an update on it, I'll be sure to like pop in like a quick video to like show how far we've gotten and stuff like that. Because I am very excited about it and I do want to like share the process more. Okay, uh, back to, back to this. Imagine those little plastic army soldiers. I, I mean, I, I'd prefer them to be a little higher quality than those little plastic army soldiers, like the green ones. I, unless that's not the ones you're talking about, but I was picturing the, the little green ones on the base. Um, those would not be the best. I mean, I, I definitely want to do miniatures. You know, but like it, it, I, I feel like you'd, I'd have to have like some sort of stats to go with it, you know, if they're like an enemy, I guess, unless you want to like just have miniatures of them and use them as something else. Depends. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I didn't do the 3D modeling. Uh, Cameron Bai did the 3D modeling. I did the, uh, I drew the dwarf, though, here. So I, I basically did this and, like, worked on all the patterns and stuff like that. Uh, and the turnaround and laid all of it out. Uh, and then he just used this and, and made... Well, yeah, he, he made the the models, and then every time he would, like, give me updates on how far the model's gotten, like, he'll give me a turnaround, and then I'll basically look at it and adjust things um, that I don't think are right yet. So I, I just basically paint over his model using the same colors, just adjusting things and then writing down notes for him to uh, to use... And then he, he goes and, and adjusts those things again and then sends me another one. And I look at it again to be like, oh, is there anything that I still want to change and stuff? So yeah, it's just a, a little back and forth. And then, ta-da, model. You know. Statuette? I think that's a good... Actually, yeah. That might be a good word. Look, that that the the issue with it is I don't know what to call it yet, right? Because it's like a weird in between. It's not big enough to be a statue. It's not a figure. Like yeah, figure, but it doesn't feel like it's a figure because it's like all compact and you can't move it. A figure makes it sound like you can move it and pose it. Um, like so maybe f f statuette is the right term I should use. What are we doing currently? Well, uh, we're currently working on the Dwarven Bazaar, uh, which is the entrance to the, the Dwarven... Uh, the Dwarven... Well, Bazaar. <laughs> I, said it, I just said it twice. Okay. Um, but yeah, that, that's what we're working on. I, I would love to give you more context, but that would be very wordy. Uh, just know it's, a, it's an entrance to where the dwarves are. And we want it to be very factory-like and in the side of a mountain. What's the call? Go figure. <laughs> Would it not technically be an effigy? I'm I'm not sure. What I I'm not quite sure about the definition of an effigy. Hold on. A sculpture or model of a person. Coin bearing the effigy of. Yeah, aren't effigies normally made out of like hay and stuff? I mean, there's statues too, but. 
normally I think of effigies as like hay. Okay, I want to listen to some music. I haven't turned on any music since the start of the stream. Uh, you guys are not going to hear it, by the way, because, well, it's it's uh, it's going to get me copyrighted or something. I don't know. Okay, let's see. Um. I actually do like how tall this is. I I'm I'm stuck at the moment by the way. That's why the drawing's not really continuing is cuz I'm not quite sure what direction um I want to put it in or or pull it in. Uh, what song are you putting on? Um, I'm, at the moment, it's, it's a song by Crooked Colors. It's, uh, it's Running Blind by Crooked Colors. I just listen to random shit. Like, it's not themed around anything. It's like, oh, yes, I have to listen to uh, thingy music to get my brain working. No, I just listen to the stuff I like listening to. I do want it to, like, slope more than just a straight, like, this sort of slopes a little. Yeah. Yeah, my taste in music is a mess. Like I just listen to random stuff. Like, uh, it it's I I like music on a song by song basis, not like artists. Um, obviously it, there's there's some artists that have more songs that I like from them than others. Uh, but it's never like oh I like this song or or uh, I I mean like it's never like oh I like this whole artist's album. You know I never listen to albums because there's always just like one or two songs I like, and then the rest I don't want to slog through to get to the two I like. Every national anthem, yep, that's that's my <laughs> that's my favorite national anthems. People listen to full albums? I, I thought that was the norm, wasn't it? Or, or yeah, I, I've, I don't really talk to people about music because for some reason, I don't know why, I don't know if anybody else feels this way, but like music feels like a, a strangely embarrassing thing to talk about for me. Where it's like, you feel ashamed of the music you listen to, or I do at least, where it's like, if somebody asks me what music I listen to, I'll tell them the the more normal stuff, right, for some reason, and then there's, like, other stuff that might put them off or something? I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't make sense at all. It's just music, but it, for some reason, feels very off to just tell people, like, oh, yeah.
What do I mean by normal? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. For some reason, I have these songs, like, categorized in my head where it's like, oh, yeah, these ones are fine to share with people. They'll probably not think too much about it. And then there's the other ones where it's like, I am not sure what people will think if I tell them I like these songs. It's not, like, weird songs. They're just... I don't know. It's, it's just something about them where I'm like, yeah, maybe they wouldn't know how to, how to, yeah. Did you die? No, I'm, I'm not dead. Did you die again? No, I did not die again. Lesser known, more personal? I, I guess so. Oh, song's over. Let me flip to something else. Um, what? Where the fuck is my playlist? Give me a sec. What did you dress up as for Halloween? Um, we don't celebrate Halloween here. I, I'd love to celebrate it uh, in a place that actually does it. Because, um, you know, I'd, I'd love to dress up as silly things and go out and, and break into people's houses and steal their uh, cutlery. That's, that's what people do on Halloween, right? I haven't done Halloween in a while. That's what they do, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'd love to dress up it was like some silly things break into people's houses. That'd be nice. A ninja costume would be funny in that situation. Uh, I used to... I, I remember when I was still in Germany and in uh, in middle school or, or kindergarten, I, I, dr I dressed up as a ninja very often. Many years in a row, for some reason. Ninja. Dress up as Otis. Yeah, I honestly, I, 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 I want to get into it. Uh, if I'm in a place that does it, and just like go way over the top with costumes, because I want to have fun. <laughs> That'd be nice. That's why I want to go to conventions too, like conventions and do some cosplay. Cultural appropriation arc. Oh no, For, just wait. Like ten years in the future, that's gonna be a no-no or something. <laughs> Ten years in the future, they'll be like, Simon did cultural appropriation back in kindergarten. He dressed as a ninja. We gotta cancel him. Like I had eight, like I had any fucking agency in the kindergarten. He knew exactly what he was talking, what he was doing. That malice beast, that young Simon was still a fucking demon. He dressed up as, <laughs> as a ninja. A red ninja as well, I think it was. Not even, not even, like, a, uh, like, the, the color of the, the outfit was red, I think it was. So, like, it's not even a stealthy ninja. It was the shittiest ninja. Unless the, I'm, I'm getting, the background is in a fucking red paint factory or, like, a very red fire or something. Um, I'm, I'm not hiding at all. As a ninja all the time, yeah.
everybody online so much better than people anywhere else? God, what do you mean better than people anybody else? Explain yourself. Ninjas didn't even exist. Well, hey now. Uh, but yeah, like, I, I'd love to, like, go to conventions and, and, uh, cosplay as well. That's something I definitely want to get into when I have the, uh, obviously when I have the funding for that. Uh, that is definitely not a cheap thing to get into. Uh, but, like, prop making and stuff like that, I definitely want to, like, try out. Um, again, not the cheapest thing to start in, but I definitely want to try it. I feel like it'd be something I'd like to do. And also, like, realizing some things that I've designed in the world, of course, like trying to do or trying to make a ROM uniform in real life would be interesting. Would definitely be, like, an interesting uh, endeavor. How far along is the book project? Uh, the book project is currently on hold, uh, and I'm going to continue it after uh, I'm done with this dwarf video. Uh, the next videos will be about the book. Well, it, it's pretty much... Um, I'm going to try to like simultaneously do drawings for videos that will also be in the book, if that makes sense. takes forever yeah that's also one thing it's like cosplay is not fast i don't think it takes a lot of time to finish one of those Um, if you're wondering what I'm listening to now, it's Infected Mushroom, uh, back at it, so. Uh, I feel like a Monster Garden cosplay done well would be amazing. I think so, too. Yeah, song name. Uh, the people who made it are called Infected Mushroom, and the song is back at it. Hmm. Looks like a fucking hot pot. Like those, um, hot pots you'd... Like these things. And then the soup around the side. Imagine people will uh, LARP as characters in the world of Monster Garden in the future. My god. If if that happens, if it gets to like that scale, I think that's uh, that that would be unbelievable. I don't think I'd be able to like wrap my head around it. Because like even at the moment with like how, how far it's gotten, it's it's very hard for me to like grasp the scope of things. I'm I'm very bad at that in general. Like I am very like I, I sort of just focus on the things going on around me and then like a few arm lengths around uh, beyond that with like friends and family and that's sort of the, the largest scope I go and then like anything beyond that is like really hard for me to grasp like wider world things and stuff like that so like uh, grasping the success of, of the Monster Garden already is like really hard it's like damn really that many people are So if it's like gets to the point of LARP, I think my head will explode. 
my mind will be blown. I'll just be like, what? People dress up as characters I drew? Uh, the Monster Garden world called is called Rust and Trenches. Or unless you mean, like, what the people in the world call the world. Because they just call it the world. I don't want to complicate things and have, like, some weird fantasy world name for them. They just call it the world. I'd love to, like, have a campaign in my world as well. If I ever get to, like, DM again. Which uh, might be a possibility. Does the Bazaar also incorporate the non-Monster Garden version of Dwarf Engineering? I don't know what that means. Do they also stop time every time they call it the- oh my god. Get out of here. Get out of here. No. Okay, let's try a few more things. You know what? I think we should try going at it at, at a different angle. What if I go for, like, silhouettes? So I'll just... That's what the brush is at. There you go. Um, let me change the shape, actually. A square might be good. That's not a square. The hell is that? That that ain't a square. There you go. Uh, it didn't really change much, does it? Why is it so soft? I need a harder square. How do I adjust the, uh... Hold on. Gotta pick the right brush here. I guess I could try... Nope. Okay, let's just go full wacko mode. Let me use this brush. Whatever this is. I don't know what this is, but we're using it. Okay, let's see. Um,
I, I yeah, it still looks like a volcano, which I'm not sure if I like or not. I mean, hold on, let me look back at the other ones again. Like, am I happy about anything of these other designs? Like, none of it feels... Like, this is still the closest one to, like, maybe I'm happy about it or, like, tolerate it to a certain degree. But it's still not good. Um, let me try putting the big smokestack on top of it. See if that changes anything. Maybe not that big might be better, or it's not that tall. Yeah, more that tall might be better. Less big, or not less big, just smaller, many ones might be better. Hmm, actually. Is this a bread forge? Yes. Yes, it is the bread forge. Maybe you could do a dome with a hole in the uh instead of it being like a traditional smokestack. Well, yeah, but like the silhouette would suffer from that, I feel. Like it'd just be a dome. There wouldn't be much other th than that. So I feel like still having a smokestack would be good and also just it would have to be a really tall dome, because you wouldn't want smoke hitting the building itself, so you'd still want the smokestacks to be, like, uh, quite far above the actual building.
Okay, it's getting somewhere. It ain't bad. I could have some towers from the cliff face. Yeah, I I know there's going to be smokestacks like randomly around other locations too. I'm just focusing on the main building right now. Simon, you do know what your design will make. Uh, we will be happy with, right? Uh, yes, yes, I do know that. Uh, thank you, though. Um, I do know that, but it's just that, you know, I myself want to be proud and happy of what I designed, too. And that means that I actually have to, you know, make a good design. like a fucking Kenshin building. And then we could have like, uh, I gotta change the brush. I say I'm working. We could have like the uh, dwarven statues here.
you know you're on the right path when you can literally just feel the vibration vibes of the thing you're creating. Yeah, but it's not there yet. That's the issue. It it It's not even close yet. Uh, after the stream, I'm probably going to go off and, like, practice some architecture in general. Just any sort of architecture to get better at it. Uh, can you have a look at this? The Starfield Bazaar trailer where the girl walks through the bazaar. It's a nice vibe regarding some shops, etc. I'm not focusing on the vibe of the shops yet, just the building itself. I'm going to try adding color to it just, just for the sake of trying. Right. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. Split alpha into mask. Black. Uh, are you going to make a lore video? Yes. Uh, after this, it will be turned into a lore video.
feels more like a mix between. Uh, it's gonna look like one of those Skyrim mountain runes where Nords buried their ancestors. Style-wise, because uh, example dwarf fortress from they're different from Wimmer ones. Well, I, I lost track. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Um, big dwarf man's happy because he got a hat. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he did get a hat. I mean, I'd say the shape ain't bad. I don't mind it. It might have potential. Issue is, it's gonna be similar to the Bunker City. Well, is it bad that it's similar to the Bunker Cities? Because the Bunker Cities are also gonna have curved roofs that are layered like that and made out of metal. But the thing is, influences happen. So what if, because this structure has been around longer than the Bunker City, so what if um, Bruce basically took inspiration from the, the Dwarven uh, Bazaar and used that inspiration for the uh, Bunker Cities when they designed them? So it's not wrong if something's similar, I'd say. It's fine. It's not in, on fire inside, by the way. God, that's like a fucking evil face. Um, it's not on fire inside, by the way. I just want to differentiate where there would be holes to the inside. Screaming in agony. Yes, it is. But that is interesting. Okay, I okay. Now that I've added color to it, honestly, I think it looks all right. It looks decent for now. I don't know if this is the the style for the dwarves that I want to settle with. I feel like it's going to change over time, but this is a, a good start. Perhaps, maybe, probably.
What the hell? What? Uh, so given that the dwarves are insect-like, are they more artisanal com communists or you social industrialists? Ah, uh, what are those words? You social industrialists. I've never heard... Your original designs of the dwarf um, themselves are very maggot-like. Would you uh, consider the doors and roofers more wa Warren-like? I Am I losing my mind? More Warren-like. Warren-like? I don't know what that is. It's the smart words. I actually understood those words. Good for you. I don't. Stop with the complicated words. Please make it simple. I'm 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 not that good at English, alright? I, I got like base vocabulary down, but not those words, Jesus. This guy a dictionary. I'm not listen, if if it requires me a dictionary to understand what you're saying, then maybe you should change how you're talking. <laughs> like if I need to pull out a fucking dictionary, that ain't good. Yeah, and then there would be obviously the uh The carts. And obviously the scale isn't really pulled off well yet. I, I think I, I can do a lot of things to like make the scale uh, more understandable. Uh, okay, let me write down some critiques for myself so I can adjust. Uh, smaller windows, like if these windows were like a lot smaller and also like at eye level. I don't know who the fuck's supposed to look through these things. Uh, hey, Stan, how's it going? Uh... Uh, you'll have to wait for the book on that, Eric. It'll give you more information. Uh, what did, did Eric, what did Eric ask? So no comment on the artisanal, the artisanal nature of dwarves and how they adjust and maintain their social political hierarchy. Fucking... I go, go ask a politician these questions. I have no idea what you're saying. You're gonna make me cry. <laughs> I'm gonna start crying if you don't stop using the big words. It makes my head go ouchy. Yeah, so uh, smaller windows would be good. Um, uh, add ornate details. That's about everything I'd want to add to it. I just need to, like, show that these, like, pillars here and stuff are, like, really decorated and such, because, like, that would help the scale a lot. At this moment, it looks very small still, because there's no small details 
but I think the windows are at fault too. If it's this small, then the windows should be like here at the bottom. Really, let me adjust that right now. So if I just do this, Like that would help make it seem more big. And then, of course, like these pillars right here, they'd have like really nice details on them. Where is my pen? There it is. They'd be like decorated to the teeth, of course. So hopefully that's going to help with the uh, look of the thing. Mm. Maybe actually more pillars might be good. These are like pretty far spaced apart. Like more pillars in between these might be good. Yeah, I think that would help a lot, too. What layer am I even drawing on? There you go. Yeah, that does help make it look a lot bigger, I think. I still need to recess them in, though. Yeah, more pillars. Ugh. Okay. Okay, I, I think that's going to be enough for the stream, though. Um, I'm starting to lose... Uh, well, I need to go eat, too. But, yeah. I, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to work on this off-stream a little bit and probably update you guys on, like, YouTube or something um, when I get somewhere. But, yeah, uh, I hope everybody enjoyed that. Sorry that I didn't, like, uh, read the chat much at the end. I was just focusing on trying to get the drawing to look right so yeah but yeah uh enjoy everybody